this is a podium, and when I use a podium, I feel very constricted. Um, a part of the reason why I left my job to pursue entrepreneurship was so that I could break structure. So I'm gonna shout, and so that you can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All the way at the back? Yeah. Good, good. How's the energy in this room? How does it feel? Is it, is it, are you guys okay? Good, yeah? Okay, good, good. I, wa I wanna, I've done this, it's kind of silly, but just to kind of, you know, like, just for me. If you guys could do this for me, I, like, it would make my day. Can you guys all stand up? Okay. What I want to do is basically when you want to execute, entrepreneurship is all about execution. Doing things and getting things done. And then most importantly, rewarding yourself. So one of the ways to really reward yourself is to give yourself that self-assurance. So for the fact that you've made it here and you took that first step, I want to I wanna have you guys all go at the same time, yes! Okay? On the count of three. And if I don't get like everything that you've got on that count of three, I'm going to make you do it again. And we're going to, like apparently Alvin said I have 50 minutes. Is that right? I have uh, around there. So, so I, I could use all 50 minutes to make you do this, just so you know. So on the count of three. One, two, three. Yes! Congratulations. You guys can have a seat down. Thank you for making it out here. I really appreciate it. Sorry I'm late. Uh, it's just that, you know, I was also speaking last night and I actually lost my voice and now I'm back and drinking lots of water so I'm feeling a lot better. But thank you so much. And I noticed, you know, a lot of you have actually taken the time, spent the money and actually come here to, you know, this business plan competition. So I just want you guys to shout out, like, why'd you guys come here? I just want to get a quick understanding. Why are you guys here? Shout it out. Fun? Fun? Sorry? To learn something. OK. How about you? Develop presentation skills and meeting with people. Amazing. How about you, Sarah? Mentorship. Mentorship. She's here to help out. We're, we're actually a group of uh, you know, like entrepreneurs that actually support one another. Like We've been doing this for a while. We went through a lot of failures. So feel free to you know, walk up to these mentors right over here, or even myself. Just ask about you know, what is it like to you know, fail your first startup, fail your second startup, or have other people fail and then come back as well. So, you know, and they also have a lot of connections. Milk, milk their connections. It's, 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 a, it's a good way to just do it. You know, always bug them every single day. Send them a lot of emails and let, let them know, you know that you're here. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm here to find out about you guys. Obviously, like, so how many, how many of you, like, is, is this your first startup? Let's ask that question. Show of hands, is this your first startup? Raise your hand. Okay, second startup, like second, second time doing this. All right, entrepreneurship is all about failure. Basically doing things and then failing, falling flat on your face and then coming back. Even if it's your business model that it evolves into something that you, know, you really want it to be. So how many of you are here because of digital media, internet, that sort of a thing? Okay, and what, what are some of the other reasons why you guys are here? What, if you have something in mind, you know, in terms of an idea and whatnot, just call them out. You don't have to say what your idea is, but like what kind of ideas are, are in this room? Buy a medical device? Fashion, any fashion people? Anyone here in fashion? What if you want to start an app? Who wants to start an app? Okay, there's a lot of app people here. And uh, so then how about, let's say, you know, any, any other form of technology? What kind of technology? Okay, who does not have an idea yet? Okay, that's a, it's a pretty significant chunk. So we need to make sure that the ideas are concrete, and I think we've, we've started to realize that. So are you guys here because you're attracted to entrepreneurship? Is that a good reason why? Like, it, it, it gives you a sense that, okay, it gives you a sense of comfort that I have something here. You know, it, it's, it's kind of strange what's happening in the economy, right? You never thought you'd see the day that lawyers, people writing their bar association, bar, uh, uh, like the, the exams, they're not getting jobs right now. Is that true? 
Like, I'm sure many of you guys have like friends that are lawyers and you know, they're having problems. And on top of that, you know, the, the people that you know, have been around in the law firms, and I'm using this as an example, they, they're staying at their jobs. They're not going anywhere because they're worried about their pension and all that kind of stuff. So how do you, how do you have that sense of security given that the job environment kind of sucks? You know, our, our grandparents have actually said like flat out that we, we mess things up for you. So it's on you, like it's actually on you to actually, you know, take on your personal burdens, pay your bills, pay your liabilities in many cases as well, because, you know, obviously a university education isn't free. Uh, and then how do you move forward? How do you get out? And then, you know, even if you do get a six figure job, what, what, what are you going to do? You're going to spend the next 10 years paying your debt? You know, I guess that's why maybe a lot of people might be attracted to entrepreneurship. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I, I, as soon as I left university, and this was out in, uh, oh God, around uh, 2009, December 2009, I left, and I was out in Acadia, out in Nova Scotia. Uh, went through a lot of ups and downs, like, but, I, but I finished, I, you know, I went through a lot of mistakes and things like that. I have a book coming out, so if you want to read about it later, I'll, I'll tell you about it. But uh, 2009, uh, you know, like I left, and I pursued my first job. I had built a lot of contacts in, you know, about the year before, and I wanted to get into the banks. You know, eventually I kept working my way, and it was really cool. I, I felt really cool that I was in a suit, I was in the corporate world, and I was walking around, and I felt like a boss, you know? And that, it, it felt good. And then I got my promotion too, which, you know, kind of uh, amped up my ego as well. And <laughs> so I, I went out, and uh, I got into a business development role out in uh, wealth management for Scotia McLeod. And so, you know, I, I started working, you know, for high net worth research. So this was really awesome. And I was really intrigued by high net worth research, you know, and how it applied to social media. And while at the same time, I was trying to run, you know, different startups, many of them failing. Like I, I failed a lot of startups, but I was, I was really attracted to entrepreneurship while working in the banks. Now, do you think working in the banks and having a business on this side might, you know, conflict? Yeah, right? So, like, what, what happened was eventually I started getting a conflict of interest. And I felt as if all my ideas that I actually had in the banks, I, it, it was being tossed out the door. And there's a reason why, because your boss might want to listen to his boss and your ideas because you're not experienced enough, you know, uh, well, what is it worth, right? What have you done? It's that kind of an attitude. So that kind of pissed me off, to be honest with you. I didn't like it one bit, uh, so I left. <laughs> and, I, and at the same time, I had started my own business. It was called Corporate Method Technologies, and which was really focused on social media. I you know, really went into outsourcing quite a bit. I was, just, I was actually attracted to outsourcing because it sounded cool. You know, when I, when, when I would go around, it's like, oh yeah, no, I'm dabbling in outsourcing a little bit. I, you know, I have this thing that I'm doing, you know, offshore or whatever. But, you know, that, and, you know, honestly, like sometimes we do things to make ourselves feel good. And that, that is, I guess, a lesson here. You know, you have to kind of uh, find it within yourself to just be as honest and straightforward as possible. But going back to that story, you know, I, I went out, I, you know, uh, got into, uh, got into Corporate Method, which is, you know, my company, my baby that I started. And next thing you know, I landed my first client. It was great. And I, you know, did the outsourcing deal as well. And, you know, I was getting some percentage of money and whatnot. And I felt that that was a good reason to just leave and pursue this. And I kept doing this. And then I started understanding things. I started understanding my margins, how my margins could be uh, impacted. So then I tried automating the business model. Eventually, I started to get into a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, you know, can I swear? Is that, is that okay? Sometimes I, I feel comfortable. I get into, I get into a lot of shit. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes it just happens and, and, I, and I feel as if like, the outsourcing was not a good idea. Uh, just because these guys, did, they started charging my credit card. And I was like, what the hell? Um, and I looked at it and I, because I, we have great Canadian banks, I actually opened it up for an investigation. And the Canadian banks actually gave me my money back and uh, gave them a bad credit rating. So I ended up getting into that sort of a thing. And from then on, I learned my lesson. I'm like, I'm only going to hire uh, Canadians and other really good people, <laughs> as well as you know, anyone who's looking to become a Canadian. Because I was at one point an immigrant, 
and I came here, settled into this country, and I eventually got my citizenship. And I was like, yes, you know, because then that Canadian passport allows me to get out into different places and do whatever I want. So I went ahead. I went out to. Uh, yeah, I'm taking a sip. I just, you know, if it's okay. Um, but I went out, started, uh, started this company. I started landing some clients. But what happened was, and the guy that was actually uh, supposed to come, uh, my mentor, uh, my investor, Ray Brooks, he was going to come here. Uh, unfortunately, he got the flu. He, he decided to back me uh, as an angel investor. And what happened was, uh, he, he wanted to help me refine a business model that I've always been thinking about, which is to help young entrepreneurs start their own business. So that's what I started getting into. And I started you know, hitting up a lot of different colleges and universities. And I started making calls while running Corporate Method, which was you know, paying the bills as well. But at the same time, I was starting to you know, collect some checks from the government too, because I had left my job. Now, what I, what I ended up doing was um, I, I started calling universities and things like that. And I started getting some opportunities, um, smaller than this in different universities, but I got access in front of students. I started engaging with students. I started understanding, you know, what does it take to get a startup off the ground really premature, like not like way down, like, you know, like as in like the ideation stage. Probably the stage where many of you are at, where you're looking to ideate your business model, refine it, and get it so down and right that you understand the revenue streams. So that's what I started specializing in. And at the same time, I started specializing in social media. Eventually, I started getting a dual specialization in social media and as well as entrepreneurship in basically enterprise creation. And that's what I really focused on. So I built up Corporate Method and I built a lot of vision behind uh, Buzz Ventures, which is starting to come to fruition as well. And Corporate Method is helping me pay the bills now. And you know, I'm really happy to say, I was just telling uh, these guys, that you know, I, I've been living in, you know, I had moved downtown. One of the big, oh, you know, I want to go back to this one thing, but I'll come back to it. You've got to, I know that you know, you, when you're pursuing entrepreneurship, you're, you've got to negotiate with your parents, right? Is that true? It's right, yeah, let's, let's admit it. Like, one, imagine leaving your stable job, you know, leaving something that you, you could have become a doctor, you could have become a lawyer, you could have done, you know, anything else, but you decide to start your own business. It's kind of scary. And it's scary for your parents because they think that, you know, you're going to fall and you're going to get hurt. And that's just how parents think. I have to tell you that you can't listen to your parents. You just can't. It, you have to do what you have to do. If you truly believe in something, you've got to do it. No matter how much you love your parents, as much as I, like, I love my parents. But I had to fulfill my vision. Like this was something that I had to do. And you know, I left my job and that was a big reason uh, that, that you know, one of the things that really made it difficult for me was you know, negotiating with my parents. Even a part of that was you know, living with my parents, like saying, look, I'm not for the first like, couple of months at least, I'm not gonna be able to you know, uh, support myself at least. I need your help, at least uh, help me stay at home. I'll try to do whatever I can. I want to eat at home. That's sort of a thing. You have to do that. And then eventually, next thing you know, you start landing your first client, second client. You start paying off different bills and you can start paying off different expenses and you realize you can move out and it's okay. And now you've come to a point where you can sustain yourself and you can let your parents know that I sustained myself. And that's what happened about maybe five months ago. And what happened was I ended up getting out and I started really uh, landing, uh, landing some deals. And I, I got, into, uh, got into my new townhouse and all that kind of stuff and I started paying rent over there. And then I moved to uh, now a new condo on February 1st. So you can sustain yourself. Like it, it can happen and it can happen in a very short period of time. So at the end of the day, like it's, it's not that far down the road. Light is not that far at the end of the tunnel. And you can sustain yourself. And you know, you can and I've seen some people do this while, you know, holding their job as well. But at some point you may have to make a decision as to what's more important. Whether it's to pursue this, pursue your passion, or you know, uh, just uh, take the plunge fully, like or just stay and hold back. If you really don't if you if you feel as if you cannot make uh, make these risks and you don't have it within you to take these risks, then please stay at your job, you know, but at the end of the day, 
going back to what I was saying about the economy and whatnot, it's going to be very difficult unless you don't learn how to make something. Unless you don't learn how to code, unless you don't learn how to actually bring something to fruition, bring ideas to fruition. That's what people are willing to pay money for these days. It's the ideas it, it's, and bringing them to reality, to execution. And that is really the core of what we're trying to do over here. We're trying to you know, come up with ideas, bring them to reality, and then you know, build a business plan that puts everything together in such a way that you've got it. Like Now it's here. You've got, you've got an actual business plan, you've got a business model, and now you're ready to get clients. It's, 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 it's scary, but it's awesome. And then you get to develop some amazing skills. And you know, at the panel last night, I was sitting next to an accountant, sitting next to a bank guy, you know, who are all doing well. You know, like they, they're doing amazing. You know, they all, and some of the questions were asked about the transferable skills. What are the transferable skills? Well, think about it. What keeps you up at night is your business. And you have to get clients, or you're not going to pay your next rent. You're, not go you're going to be left starving if you're not able to, you know, pay off your bills. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that is a big part of the pride. That's how we support each other. I mean, these guys have fed me so much. <laughs> they, they run a company called Food Vault. <laughs> so they've actually uh, given me a, a, a lot of great food. So if you, if you want to be fed as well, please talk to them because they have amazing food. Sorry, guys. I'm getting a lot of people knocking on your door. Or, but yeah. So what do you guys think so far? I mean, you know, am I making sense? Uh, am I being clear over here? Uh, have I picked up the pace a little bit? I mean, do you like this? Give me a nod. Good. Good. So what, what do you guys, I want to hear from you a little bit. Enough about me. You've, you've heard about me. Like I said, I'm here for support. Like, I, you, you know, like if you really want to understand what it takes to start it, she's taking a picture. That's cool. Facebook it to me. <laughs> But basically, um, you know, if there's, uh, if there's any, you know, like, questions, I'm here. Like, we're all here. We're all here to help. We want to see you succeed. Believe me. Like, we really, you know, entrepreneurship culture is lacking. And we are really at, you know, a tipping point where we're, this is our only opportunity to push entrepreneurship. I mean, San Francisco, they have it made. I'm so jealous. Because you can get out there to San Francisco and probably get a better investment deal over there. And that's why people get out there because you know, like the situation over here is the valuations. So the real key question is, how can you drive valuation behind your business? What can you do to really add value to someone that is potentially looking to purchase or to potentially you know, have you just take it on and drive a lot of sales? But sometimes when a business is like this, it may make sense to sell it off because when it reaches that point, the value depreciates. There's, there's not enough in it for someone to take it on. So, you know, you've got to make these decisions sometimes and you have to understand that. So, you know, you have to go with that in mind. What can I do to drive so much sales that everyone wants to jump into your business? What can I do? And how can I acquire clients that are willing to drop some serious dollars? I mean, it really comes down to that. And how can I refine my business model? I want to, I want to like, Ask some questions. I really want to know like some of the questions over here because I want to tackle you know like some of the problems, some of the real problems, some of the real challenges that people are going through in this room. Please, just say it. I'll, I'll wait all day. Seriously, no, I'm not. I'm not joking. I have 50 minutes, right, Alvin? Hi. So let me, let me kind of, uh, kind of, so basically what you're asking about is like the business plan itself, like in terms of writing a business plan or just kind of understanding the business plan and see yourself. In terms of trying to understand your idea more clearly, because mm -hmm. usually ideas start as kind of this passion for whatever you come up with. Yeah. And then you have to think of, okay, how is this actually going to make money? 
That's interesting. That's a great question. You know, I would point you to an amazing resource. It's called Business Model Generator. I'm sure many of you might have heard about Business Model Generator. Show of hands, how many of you heard of it? Okay, a couple people. It's good. Uh, so basically what you know, they've managed to do, it's really interesting, is they've got like sort of a business model canvas that helps you understand. The, the, the things that were really important that struck out to me were you know, your, your ideal clients, your target market, your target group. You know, who, who are you trying to get this product out to, first and foremost? And then your revenue streams. What kind of revenue streams can you get out of it? You know, what can you do, really, to, you know, first and foremost, identify you know, your ideal client. This is my ideal client. But then, how can I get enough revenues out of it? But here's the real key, key part that you need to understand. You're living in Toronto, so you're understanding about accessible markets. Whether your market is supposed to be you know, within this Toronto region, or whether you need to get out to the GTA, or whether you need to go all across, across Ontario. So if you're gonna do that, how many of your ideal, ideal clients are in this vicinity, are in Toronto? How many of these people? And what can you do to find that out? Seriously, like, and, and that really helps you understand how it's gonna make money because if you know how many of these people are within this vicinity, like within this Toronto vicinity and then in the Ontario vicinity, all that sort of stuff, then you get a real sense of how much, like what you can penetrate. And then you have to understand the conversion. You know, if I'm gonna pick up the phone or if I'm gonna approach 10 ideal prospects, 10 ideal clients, how many of them are gonna say yes? Is it two? Is it three? How many do you feel confident will say yes to your product? And how do you test that? How do you get out there and actually test that with, in front of your ideal clients. What kind of marketing would you have to do to really get out there and test that? And that, that is really the core of how you, how you do it. And that gives you more confidence that yes, this product works. Yes, this is it, I understand it, I get it. And then you get a sense of how much you should charge. Because you, know, you may do some surveys, you may you know, do some feedback, some market analysis, say whether it's gonna be $6 or $5. Then what you can do is you can have a forecasted revenue. That's where you understand the value behind your business. Because you could say that I went out on Dundas Square, you know, and I sold my cookies, and I said, okay, it's gonna cost two or three dollars or whatever, and so many people bought it, and therefore, I understand that, you know, out of this many people that approached it, you know, this many people uh, said yes. And because of that, if I do this so many times in a year, I can accumulate this much revenue. Am I making sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, good. So that will help you get an, av a like an annual pro forecast. And what you can do is, that estimate, you can break it down. You can break it down on a, on a monthly average, on a weekly average, on a daily average. And then you know, every day, you'll be able to get this much revenue. That's kind of cool, right? Like, and that, that actually is intelligent when you're having a conversation. When someone, when an investor is you know, potentially interested in your business or whether someone wants to find out about your business, you can demonstrate to them that, look, I understand my business model. I know my problems. I know my challenges. And I'm trying to get to the core of it. And I'm trying to understand every little thing possible to really get to the bottom of my business plan. That's how you do it. Did that help? reach out to me, like, look, also guys, I just want to let you know, um, I'm doing a five hour business plan session on, uh, Alvin, are you here? What day, what day am I doing this? On Friday, so like at 1.30? Is it? 12? Well, yeah, when does that start? 1.30, so I'm doing like a five hour thing. I can explain you all this stuff so that it gets in your head and you guys know like how to do it, like, and no cost obviously, like as of now, like, it's, it's use me seriously you know I, not in that way but like use me <laughs> seriously but yeah what other questions now that we've answered we've tackled one person's challenge so explain again yeah so <laughs> as I explained I was working in the bank um, you know, while I was doing this, yes, it is very much possible. Uh, your boss might think it's a little odd sometimes, 
but you can get around it because most, from what I've found, most people are very supportive. Um, and there's nothing stopping you from taking a sabbatical. So what are the major difficulties? Yeah, they're like obviously time and fatigue. That is really, like you can support yourself, no problem. But time and fatigue is bad. Uh, because if you're working on this yourself, because if you're not able to delegate yet, if you don't really have someone, if you don't have the connections to be able to just pass the work on to someone, then it's really about the fatigue aspect. Uh, you can get really tired doing this, and that, that is the problem. You can lose a lot of motivation. Um, you know, but if, you, if the idea is something that you really believe in, you'll find yourself, like what I did, what I used to do was I had my lunch hour between 12 to 1 when I used to work at Scotia, and <laughs> I actually would go during lunch hour into the conference room and I would make cold calls <laughs> from the conference room. So, you know, think about how silly that is because, you know, like, it's, it's crazy, but that's what I wanted to do. And that's how I landed my initial clients. You know, that's what really got me going. And this, to think about, that was about a year and three months ago, around there. So, you know, that, that's, what, that's what really was interesting. That's what I found uh, to be uh, something that motivated me. And, and that's when I knew that I'm like, oh my God, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> you know, like, it's as if like, Oh my God, this is, this is something that is within me. I can't help it. Uh, and you know, uh, if, I, if I keep doing this bank job, I'm, I'm gonna, I feel as if that my soul, I'll lose my soul. I know that's a little deep and whatnot, but that's how I really felt. And you know, like these ideas, I really wanted to execute them. There's a lot of support and take a sabbatical, save up your vacation, take a sabbatical and do this, try this routine, figure it out, you know, like, see, and you know, if you're willing to have an open conversation with your boss, if you have an open relationship, explain it to him. Say, look, I'm gonna work my ass off for you. Like, really, I'm gonna work my butt off, and I really want, but I need enough capital. Like, I, when I left the banks, I had $10,000 saved up, and I'm really happy to say that I managed to maintain that $10,000 $10, just because uh, that helped me get, you know, where I need, it gave me that confidence. So if you really need some more confidence doing it, save up enough capital. You guys are all young. Is there anyone married in this room? No, right? Does anyone have kids? Because that would be, okay, so did, were you joking? Oh, no, I you, you're married, congratulations. Um, but so we've got one, and uh, do you have uh, kids or anything? I have a daughter. You have a daughter, okay. So your situation's obviously different from everyone else, like, and, and I'll say how that's different because you know, you guys don't have to necessarily, and uh, are you guys living with your parents, or what's the situation? Are you living on your own, or are you, how are you paying, who's paying your rent? Like, that sort of a thing. I know these are a lot of personal questions, but the reason why I'm saying and asking this is because it matters. If you're able to pay off, you know, if you're paying off your own rent, then that's, a, that's something that you have to worry about. That's an actual issue that, you know, it's like, this is something, if I don't pay my rent, I'm gonna get into trouble. But if you're okay, if if you're able to you know, kind of manage your own bills, manage this and whatnot, or if, you're, if there's something that gives you that sense of assurance to move forward, if you have enough capital, so if you get into trouble, you're able to kind of pay that off and you're able to build enough capital to kind of just take the plunge, do it. And I, and I can tell you that I think $10,000 will be enough to do it, I really do. Because you're able to you know, withstand the recurring payments that you may have for the next like four to five months and that may give you enough time to go get a deal that will help you get money back in your company or even get financing so that you could pay off those bills on your business and as well. So the key thing really that will help you give that confidence, give that assurance, you know, and help you survive really uh, is that capital. And if you, you know, if you had recently, you know, gotten laid off or anything like that, because it happens, it's a reality of today, uh, there's opportunity in that. You can, you can actually get the, and you know, if this is with, if you worked like about two years or so, you can actually get employment insurance. So what happens is you're able to, you know, pay off, you know, your bills using employment insurance because employment insurance gives you 60% of your income back, you know? So you're able to at least pay off the basic bills and manage your company for about, you know, six months, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So there's ways around it. There's lots of options to help you build an exit strategy to you know, get out and into the open. If you're really serious about this, if you wanna, if you wanna do this full time, if you're really committed about it, you, know, it, it, you, can't like, you, know, you can't just 
kind of flirt with it. You have to really just go into it and you know, go hard. Go big or go home. And there's going to be that point where you're going to understand, okay, this is it. I get it. I understand it and whatnot. And you know, to go back to your question, you may want to do everything you can while you have the job until you realize that, wow, I'm at a conflict of interest. And it's that moment where you understand that you got a conflict of interest is when you realize that, okay, I need to make a decision. You know, it's a sink or swim, really. But all I'm trying to say is most of you are young. You know, most of you are young. This man right here, he has, you know, he has different, different challenges and whatnot. Is that, that's true, right? And it's, it's a different situation for him. But if you're, if you're going through that phase where you haven't got the liability of a mortgage yet, uh, whether you know, you're, you're, not, you're not married yet and that sort of thing, you don't have those kind of commitments, then you can make mistakes, you can fail, and you can, you can make those repeated mistakes and learn from them. The, the big thing, this is why th this sort of movement is great. Universities, you know, they've only just started opening up to the entrepreneurship culture. You know, and even if like, they've opened up, it, it's very much so that they're very afraid of failure too. Um, they don't like failure at all. And entrepreneurship is all about failure. Ask these guys right here. It's all about failure. Has heard of CYBF? How many of you have heard of CYBF? Okay, only four people in this room have heard of CYBF. Oh my God. And so, you know, I, the interesting thing, how old are you, sir? 29. Even this man can get a CYBF grant. Seriously, Canadian Youth Business Foundation. So a CYBF is pretty much like a forgivable loan uh, that they will give you if they like your business plan. Uh, they mark and grade your business plan and whatnot, and you know it's actually a, like you know like it's marked the same way we'll be marking your business. Sorry. They also have momentum. Program. Momentum, exactly. But here's the interest. Exactly. And guess what? Most of these government-funded programs, they get matched. So CYBF, if you got like between twenty to thirty thousand dollars from CYBF, it'll get matched by the BDC. Seriously. So then, next thing you know, you have about fifty thousand dollars. It happens. It happens all the time. Your universities also have fellowships, and they have grants that they do give to. Uh, it's called the SCB Science, Engineering, and Business Student Grant, which is about fifty thousand dollars um, or thirty thousand, depending. Each university offers a different amount, so you guys can go and look into that as well. There's so many ways around this, guys. Like it's not even funny. So like you can get the support you need. Your government wants to see new businesses succeed because if that doesn't happen, there won't be job creation. It just won't happen. And if there's no job creation, then we don't have publications saying that there's job creation. It's as simple as that. <laughs> you know, that's a good way to put it, right? So, you know, and it's very important because big people, they want to see job creation. And if that's not happening, then Toronto is not a great, great place to do entrepreneurship. I'm happy to say though that Toronto is starting to become a great place to do entrepreneurship because we are all of a sudden starting to see some resources open up to us. And I feel as if it's important that we take advantage of these resources to at least indicate that look, this is what we're doing, this is how we're gonna do it, and this is where we're gonna go. And next thing you know, you all become success stories. You guys can all you know, like start speaking about this, speaking about your experiences, telling people, inspiring people, and motivating people to start their own company do things, make challenges, make failures, all that sort of stuff. And you can then get better. You know, you, you can have that, you know, motivation to create things and, you know, uh, find, find different ways to collaborate, innovate, and, you know, find new ways to move into new territories. Does that seem awesome or what? And never give up. <laughs> and never up. give up, exactly. Be persistent. Yeah. I want to take a few more questions before I get out of here before I get out and uh, you know, let you guys get out and do what you gotta do, but come on, more questions. You've got an opportunity here. You know, you've got an op, yes. Uh, so you were mentioning uh, market research kind of indirectly about standing on the corner and asking questions. Uh, can you give some other examples of how to do market research on your own without any help from other companies? Absolutely, so there's, in fact, I, I would urge you to do market research you know, by yourself initially so that you understand it as much as possible. It's social media metrics. A, a lot of social media metrics out there that you can use. Um, you know, the key thing is to have an understanding of how to gain these analytics. 
So as soon as you set up a website, as soon as you set up you know, different entities, diff like shopping carts even, as soon as you set up, set up all, all sorts of stuff that is online based, you can put in the footer code of each, uh, each HTML page, uh, you know, a, an actual code that tracks the Google Analytics. Uh, and, that, and that is really important. A lot of Web 2.0 uh, sites actually you know, give you tracking and analytics. It's just that many of us don't look at them. And then we start to understand how many people are accessing our, uh, our, our website on, the Facebook, on a mobile device or you know, how many people are liking, you know, that sort of a thing. So like, that's really important eh, because that gives you a sense of how many males, females, right there you get, you get an idea of how many people actually are interested in you. Go to your website and find out more about you. That's important, it, it really is because that right there is market research at its core. Uh, now you're finding out like the popularity of your website you know, whether you know, people are willing to engage. And, and now there's metrics that allow you to find out about engagement and help you see an ROI, a return on investment for each dollar you spend. So if you spend even as low as $10 on Facebook um, advertising, you can actually see your return, you know? They'll estimate your return, you can see. And you can, you can target your market as much as possible. You can say within 18 to 24, uh, within this uh, country, like from this country, and you know, have to be like this ethnicity, that sort of stuff, you can do that. And you can actually you know, pay a few dollars for it actually. To under and then you actually get your return and you find out how many people actually liked your Facebook or whatever, or uh, actually you know, went to this part of your website. That sort of stuff, it can happen. And these are called conversions. And that on its core uh, is market research all in all. It's the new way of market research. And you can do this. It, it, it's, you can do this. Yeah, well, it, it, that, there's two scenarios right there. Because mine was a bit of politics within that startup. Like, you know, it just, it, like, it just didn't work out uh, for that reason. And then, you know, yours was you have another idea. Like, look, if you have another idea and you just want to do it, do it. Because what's happening is, this startup right here is not what you're passionate about, and chances are, if it doesn't belong to you, you're gonna just get a job in that startup, and that's it. And you know, it's a salary at the end of the day. If you own your own business, you can pay yourself whatever salary you feel is comfortable to you, and then put back the rest into the business. So at the end of the day, you're thinking about yourself here, and when, if, you're, if yourself is more important to you, which I do recommend, you know, I, I would take that latter you know, plunge, because you're not, you're not going to spend the rest of your life working for someone else. That's the reason why you're, you've, you're sold on entrepreneurship, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's very easy to, you know, like people will understand. If you, if you just, even if you put in writing and just let people know and give them, you know, good, good credit for everything, teaching them all these lessons and whatnot, and just say sayonara, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's straight up business, you know? And, and keep your personal friendships, let them know that, you know, love to be friends, love to support one another. Uh, let them know that this is where I'm going into and I would love to support, maybe we can become partners, you know? Like, there's ways, there's collaboration, there's B2B, right? And they'll probably be okay with it because, you know, if, if you're a shareholder in that business, chances are they're gonna get more shares in that business. So it's kind of a win-win at the end of the day. It's not such a bad thing. And I don't think anyone's gonna make you feel inclined unless they're dependent on you, in which case you should be owning that business. If they're dependent on you, like if you're the person making all the stuff, making things happen, then you should have your own say. It's, it's, it's all you, like, you know? Does that help? Great. More questions? Any more? You guys okay? Okay, good. So guys, I want to tell you just a little bit, you know, about what I do and whatnot. Um, basically, you know, as you know, like my ladder company helps young entrepreneurs start their own business. I don't charge money for it. Uh, basically, what I do is I take a percentage of shares in each company that I feel as if I could, you know, help out and whatnot. If you feel as if I could add value, if you feel as if, um, you know, I would make a good business partner, I usually take 10 to 15% off the shares of the new startups. I have about uh, 13 startups in the city that I've helped get off the ground, and now they're approaching positive cash flow. So I basically own a portfolio of companies, new startups, new innovative startups, because I truly believe in this philosophy of helping new businesses startups. 
my ultimate vision at the end is to really, you know, have a lot of businesses that, you know, the city is, you know, uh, fostering and whatnot. So that, that's my, those are my plans. If you feel as if, you know, we can work, we can collaborate, don't hesitate to drop me a line. I'm here. I'm happy to help. And, you know, feel free to tweet to me. I, I just started uh, using Twitter a lot. Uh, actually, BJ Penn, you know that fighter, uh, BJ Penn? He actually just followed me two days ago. How crazy is that? So, anyways, tweet me at, bad, at Baz Mirza. Add me on Facebook. I'll accept your friend request. Uh, it's, it's okay. Oh. What's going on this Friday? Uh, you said doing yeah, I'm doing a five hour business plan workshop. So, you'll get five hours of me. Five hours. Where? Oh, two? Okay. Okay, sorry, guys. It's two hours. <laughs> but it'll be a great crash course. Uh, great, great, cra great crash course. So, you'll get two hours of me, and don't worry, you'll get a lot in two hours. And um, where is it? Sorry? Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll... we'll I, I, do you have everyone's email here? Yeah? Okay, so it'll be posted. Uh, you guys will know. Uh, where, where is it again? I, I need to know. I, I don't know. <laughs> chemistry building at U of T, guys. So, chemistry building, feel free to show up. If you want to build a personal relationship with me, I'm all about that. You know, I, I know that like sometimes it's a little odd like if I'm like standing here and you guys are in the audience, but I'm all about personal relationships. I, you know, I, I love meeting new people. I love making new friends. So don't hesitate to, you know, uh, come up to me and, you know, like let me know. Like I, I'd love to understand your situation. I'd love to help you out. Uh, you know, just have that conversation. So thanks. <laughs> sure.